Today, we have Zoe with us. She is awesome. She is our corporate office manager at Scooters Lawn Care, owner of No Bad Lemons, and an aspiring, inspirational badass. It came very natural for you to be bubbly and nice and, and friendly to people. What was interesting was the transformation of when you started until where you are now to, yes, you still have that portion, but when there's a problem, you also know how to defuse, mm -hmm. um, you know, really walk someone in the right direction because there's times where the person's totally justified and mm -hmm. then there's times where the person's totally derailed and, you know, you, no matter what, you're like the counselor of a lot of situations well, and, and bringing them back. Back to a place where right. you know, there can be some semblance of everybody's happy. Because overall, whether it's a good situation or a bad situation, regardless of who's right, who's wrong, who dropped the ball, you still have to keep in mind that they're, you're still in the middle of the experience. So even if a customer's mad or whatever, because I mean, we mess things up, yeah. we're honest. And I think a lot of people appreciate the honesty of... I totally forgot to email you or or we totally forgot to put this on the estimate or just the transparency with our clients also because they're human beings just as much as we are and I think if I had to pick one compliment that I've heard from clients throughout you know my many years is you know you guys are you guys are honest and your customer service is top notch as in we're not bullshitting people we're being honest and we're explaining and educating also so for everyone listening to this, the fucking big message there, you pull out of that if you want it black and white to take a note right now. And this is huge in every single fucking thing. Whether you're an employee or whether you're dealing with anybody in the world is when something happens, when you fuck up, it is not making excuses. It is, oh, yes. okay, so I fucked up. I didn't call you. You gave the perfect example of the, the thing that probably makes us the strongest that we push of like a no excuses, no victimhood mentality because nobody gives a flying fuck about why you did not do exactly. what you were supposed to do. People don't want to wanna hear that. I did not call you. It got really busy. I'm sorry I didn't call you. I try to not even say I got really busy. You know, I, I try to say, hey, I messed up. I was supposed to call you yesterday. Ball. I dropped the ball. And sometimes, like, I understand it's going to roll off your tongue, but there are people who run their business, who run their life, who run every single situation that when they drop the ball, they always have an excuse. It, it, an excuse is for one person. It is for the person mm -hmm. making the excuse to mm -hmm. make them feel better, to feel justified about fucking up. And unfortunately, even though it might make you feel better, no one else gives a flying fuck and it is a bad representation and it shows that it shows your true character and if you want to really excel in life and you could just take total accountability for everything in all of your experiences in life even though that's harder to not say something that makes you internally feel better it will make your life easier that's one of those deals like with everything in life usually doing the harder thing will make your life easier i've had countless conversations of this same thing like diffusing an issue and the and I know you can totally agree with me. It's like you can cut a conversation. You can just make a conversation 10 times better with someone who's angry by saying, we totally missed this note and we didn't do this or whatever. We totally hold ourselves accountable. That I think I that's always my, my word of like, we totally hold ourselves accountable. Um, we'll get this corrected. This is our fault. And then they're immediately like, oh, thank you. Yeah. It's not like... It's not a 20 minute conversation of why we're not wrong. It's, yeah. It's it, a waste of time. If someone is mad at you, and especially when it is your fault, it's one thing that if it, it's a, a situation <laughs> where it's not technically your fault, maybe there's some misunderstandings, maybe so on and so forth. But when it is your fault, agreeing. Agree. Yep. I, 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 I totally agree. agree. I 100% I, I'm on board with you. I, I messed up. Mm -hmm. Here is what we're going to do. This is the path to the resolution and you just have so much more success. You can agree with people when they're wrong. Like I agree that right. your feelings are like, I, I agree with your feelings and I understand why it's that way. You just like, I see owners get mad about situations or even mad when they let, and then when blaming. they drop the ball and then blame. And then it's like, dude, being a professional is a big deal. <laughs> like, right, and, like, eight and, time, and like there's gonna be those people that are just totally unreasonable. Mm. Like those people are out there. We we all know one, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. We've all dealt with one. Probably fucking 50. And <laughs> you can only do so much, but I would say what sticks out more than anything is just like accountability, honesty, and agreeing, like you said. Yeah. And just like 
getting the problem solved quicker and getting an explanation quicker yep. instead of some bullshit 20 minute wah wah this isn't our fault because like it is your fault yeah most um, of the time sometimes there's a saying that i love that time kills kills deals right like so you're gonna sell shit you're gonna sell less shit if it takes longer mm -hmm. but also like <clears throat> time explodes problems too like so anything you know if you, you be accountable if there's an issue that comes up in business you hold yourself accountable you do not make excuses and you put it at the top of the burner of problems to solve because the faster you can get a resolve the faster you can get answers i, I i've said mm -hmm. this a lot that you know when someone's mad whether they're justified unjustified whatever the situation or we don't even really know yet the the common thing to do is to try to want to back away from that because you don't want to like maybe i'll just stop dealing with them and it'll go away or maybe i'll just email them yeah instead of just calling. email them and when re when the real solution is you bury yourself so far in their ass that that uh, yeah. you know i am Aggression. not going i am not going away until this is better so okay i got a few more questions for you what would you say your biggest weakness is my biggest weakness is my reactions that's personally and professionally, like almost getting defensive sometimes if yeah. like someone holds me accountable or whatever. Not all the time, I'm working on it, so I would say it's getting better in my memory. Like the memory thing, I, I don't like to use it as an excuse because I don't think there is an excuse for it. I think yeah. when you have a weakness and you can acknowledge your weakness, you find ways to just make it better. Like my planner, taking notes, all that good stuff. Like you can't just you can't just whine and cry and say, oh, it's just because I have a bad memory. Yeah, I 100% agree. I mean, back to you can't make excuses. Like if there's no, to some extent, some people might feel bad. Like, hey, I'm missing my leg or whatever, yeah. you know? Like, and, you know, like, yeah. even in something like that where everyone will feel bad, if you say it enough, mm -hmm. people aren't going to care. Right. You know what I mean? People know if you burn the excuses down 24 seven, like people no one's gonna wanna listen are to not going to give a shit. Something that I can tell you though, that I love and you're working on what you're saying, your situation is how did you phrase the first part of that? What you feel like, not the memory, the other part, like being defensive or like being, my reactions, being defensive. What I do like, that's very interesting about this that I've never told you be prepared. Oh man. You're a much stronger woman than you've ever been. Mm -hmm. And yes. so what I do, as much as there's times where your response to me now, I don't love it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I don't like that you, you snap back. Um, I think it's you navigating becoming a much stronger woman mm -hmm. and figuring out like, you know, there was a time where you wouldn't have said anything. Right. And there was a time where I, I my, my opinion only, which, you know, it's just my two cents. So it means literally nothing. But I believe that there was probably a time where you just kept all of that in, which that's probably not as healthy and doesn't let you communicate as well versus mm -hmm. now you're, um, I've even seen that in your ability to lead, you know, you're, you're, you jump on top of situations and you're still navigating what's, what's the right amount versus what's too much, what's too little, mm -hmm. you know, and I yeah. think that that's awesome because it's showing that you are becoming a much stronger and more, uh, I don't know, just really put, put that out there mm -hmm. instead of holding that in and, and that just helps your communication. So a much stronger woman. And I think mm -hmm. that's really, really cool. And a lot of that is like reading books yeah, and like just self diagnosing and, and owning that like, Hey, you need to work on this. And, and it goes a lot in with like being a manager. If you're reactive and you're defensive over everything, no one wants to talk to you. Like no one wants to come to you with a crucial thing because they don't know how you're going to react and yeah. I don't want to be that person. And so I don't know. I've read a lot of good books on, I'm on one right now, crucial conversations. And it's so good on, it's like stepping back and like not letting your brain just immediately take over. Cause your brain is like can, your worst enemy yeah. and it's like a survival mode thing. And it's what our brains are wired to be like is safety, safety, safety. Yep. And conquering that has probably been a, a one of my biggest challenges but it's it's like a fun challenge because it's i do it every day and it goes into my job so yeah. it's like when i handle something really good i'm like okay good do that more often yeah think about this don't freak out when your jacob tells you something that you don't want to hear so um yeah it's it's a weakness for sure but it's um it's good because then i can start to master it and then i can teach people and inspire people to master that as well because i mean everyone's got 
something like that that they need to work on. And just the fact that you're working on yourself and you're you're realizing that about yourself because you know you're you're the nicest person in the world. You know you're becoming better all the time, and you're still finding something that hey I can work on this. And on top of that, the drive to want to work on that, inspire other people, is making you do one of the coolest things in the world, which is investing in yourself. The only investment that you can literally mm -hmm. never. You can never lose. It never goes down in value. It never depreciates. Never get it taken away, and that's really one of the things that um, you know I've loved most about business. Once you've learned a lot of stuff, like if I lost everything, I could start over so much easier again. Mm -hmm. And so the more right. you learn and work on yourself, the more whatever situation you get put in, you're more resilient because you're not relying on things being given to you. You're relying on what you've put in your brain. Mm -hmm.